if you've got video files that are in formats that aren't necessarily quite so useful or won't be opened by Cubase, what you need to do is convert them into a format that can be opened by Cubase. So here, for example, I've got an AVI file, which may not be Cubase's favorite file type, especially on the Mac. So if I double click on that, I'm able to open it in the QuickTime player. This is just the standard QuickTime player that comes with Mac OS X. What it will do is it will convert it into a format that it's able to play back natively. And then from there, I will be able to save it out as a format that Cubase is happy with. Now, there are various different applications that you can use for doing this. Some are paid, obviously, and some are free. If you have video editing software, it may well be a good option to use that to convert your video because it's probably geared towards just that kind of thing. The various free applications are some are good, some are bad. There's one called iSkySoft Video Converter, which I use, and it's a paid app, but it's relatively cheap and it's extremely good. And if you work with video more generally, it's very handy to have. It's like a, a great video toolbox. But this is QuickTime Player and this is free, so it's now in a format that can be opened. So I could now export it out to the desktop in a format that Cubase will be happy with. It didn't seem to take very long. If I close this, I don't want to save the sort of temporary version, but here is my MP4 version. So that's no longer an AVI, that's now an MP4. Now that doesn't always work with every file format. This WMV file here, for example, is problematic because I've tried to open that off camera and it's just not having it. It doesn't like it at all. So one of my expensive video conversion programs could work with that. But the idea really is to not spend lots of money on video converter if you don't have to. So one interesting technique, if you have got something like a WMV file, is to try and get it onto a Windows system so that you can then convert it from there, which will be much easier to do on Windows than it is on the Mac. If you're working with MPEG files, which you sometimes get, especially with older stuff possibly ripped from DVD, there's an app called MPEG Stream Clip, which is free. It's a little bit old these days, but it's pretty cool. If I have something, here's an MPEG file, which I created to demonstrate this. So if I drop my MPEG file into it, it's going to tell me I haven't got the right component installed. Great. Okay, so that's not going to work. But that just demonstrates that actually you need to have the correct codecs and components installed on your computer. Working with digital video can be can be a bit fiddly. If you really want to stop all this messing about, you need to try and be sent the video in the original format. Again, if you're working with video files that have come from a phone or a consumer camera, they will probably be in MP4 or M4V format already, which is pretty helpful.